What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Railroads Online and you'll see we've struck oil, it's fantastic. I actually connected up to the oil industry, it wasn't really hard to do. If you look just down there, you can kind of see it in the clearing. We're right next to those two parallel double lines that we made and actually the tool works, the iron works is right over there. So we're going to actually assemble a train today and deliver products to the oil. We need steel pipes. We need beams and we need some tools from our ironworks. So the ratio of products for this is one tool plus three beams plus three steel pipes equals a bunch of oil. And it's, I think, 24 oil for each of those. So it's just a lot of oil. Look at this danger. Keep lights and fire away. That's fantastic. And then, of course, we can come pick up our oil here once it's delivered with these little spigot lines, I guess. I don't really know. We got to get up on that platform. We open up the valves and drain the oil into all our cars. We could, in fact, have put lines on both sides. There's valves on this side as well. But I figure one side's probably good enough. And we've got just a nice loop track that comes in, loops around, and, of course, goes around the whole area. So we're just going to take our hand car back to the station, and we're going to pick up a train to do this. Now, to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to buy one tool box car because we need one of those. And then that will give us 24 tools. And then we're also going to buy one more stake flat because we currently have 17 stake flats. And if we buy 18, then we can do 18 cars of beams, which will give us 54 beams. We can do six cars of pipe, which the pipes actually use the same cars as the log cars. So we have 10 of those, no problem. And we can do one car of tools. So this train will be 25 cars long. This will be a 613,000 pound train that we're going to pull with the Eureka which is kind of amazing because the Eureka is a pretty weak engine. However, on flat ground, the Eureka still pulls 1.3 million pounds, and this is pretty much flat ground. On 1%, the Eureka can only pull 335,000 pounds, but, uh, you know, this line, like I said, mostly flat, and the few parts that are actually at grade aren't going to be a steep enough grade to make any bit of a difference, I don't think. It'll be such a shallow grade for such a short period of time. But we're going to head back to the freight depot and assemble this train up and then do some product delivery. It's actually kind of funny. We're going to get the beams first. We'll pick them up at the sawmill first, which is, you know, going to be the majority of our weight. But the rest of the products are really just like right over there. Like they're, it's so close. We're going to come past it with an empty train and then come in here and grab those as well. You know, it would make more sense probably to split the train up and have just a beams train and then just a pipe and tools train. But, you know, whatever. So now, of course, the only industry we have left on the entire map to deliver is the refinery. And if we connect to the refinery, that's the entire map connected up. And then, of course, we could make some alternate routes to get from point A to point B a little bit faster. But it does mean that we will have absolutely everything connected up. To be honest, the main alternate route we need right now is the smelter to the coal line mine that skips that super steep 6% section. Because if we had a gradual route that goes from the smelter, it'd be a little longer, but we could run much heavier trains up to the coal mine. Mine, and we wouldn't struggle the way Heiss and I did a few videos ago. But here I've got a nice little switch section, so it goes into a Y, and then this Y, of course, splits into the two tracks. So I looked at the map before I did this. I was thinking if we were going to have a plus or not, but for the refinery, it makes more sense to go down to the ironworks and then have it fork off the ironworks. So that's what we're going to do for the refinery line. The switches for it will be way down there. But you can see on both sides, I've got an identical setup for this. So you can come off either lane or get on either lane. So you can see we're coming in here. Now we are left-hand drive, so we do need to flick this and stay on the left side. Perfect. But you can see we've just got a transfer switch that goes from that lane to this lane. So if we were coming in from the left, we could turn right and then turn right again through another switch and get on. It's not exactly great. I would have rather had this come in and then cut across. But obviously we don't have weird angled pieces. We only have 90 degrees. So it switches over and then switches over again and then cuts off. And on the other side, same thing. All right, we're getting back into the freight depot. I'm not exactly sure what the conditions of the switches are. We could bring the caboose as well on the Eureka train. I'm not going to bother. I kind of keep the caboose when we're just doing track maintenance just so you have, you know, something. So let's just break our caboose here. And let's bring our Eureka all the way over. And actually, we can buy our cars right away. So let's buy first a stake flat, which is a flat car number two. Order one of those. And that should put it over there in the first lane, which it does. And then if we buy a boxcar, it should put the boxcar right in front of it. Boxcar stores tools, 950. Wow, those are expensive. Oh my god, look at how high up the brake is. 
What? You stand on the roof to use the br- I guess that makes sense. There's nowhere to stand here. Dude, that's awesome. We need a train of just boxcars. The problem is it's 24 tools per car. So, like, you really only need, like, one or two boxcars max. For this episode, we're gonna only drive in first person. Just because, uh, I feel like we're getting to that point in the gameplay where, you know, we should be able to drive only in first person. And that shouldn't be an issue. And I figure this is a pretty easy route. So we'll see if we can do it. Alright, let's get some hitches on these cars. Perfect. There's gonna be brakes applied on this one, but that's okay. Ooh, oh, that's a little hard. Okay. Flip that. Excellent. Not enough. Let's get this brake off. This is so cool. This is amazing. There's only one brake way at the front. That's so funny. Oh my goodness. Alright, uh, we need to go back a little bit further. Get these two guys connected up, and then we'll go grab the rest of our load. This is gonna be the biggest train we've ever pulled with Eureka, but I just wanted to prove that, like, you know, with the realistic physics and stuff, if you have a flat track, the Eureka is still a very capable engine, which is always really, really exciting. Perfect. Now let's go hook up the rest of our load. So we're gonna have to go back out onto the main line and then back in, hook up those, and then we're gonna just back those all the way around and grab six of these. Probably not how you would do it. You would probably use, like, a shunting engine to put that train together rather than, you know, back around the entire freight line, but... Whatever. It, it'll get built. It shouldn't be a big deal. This is a nice gradual turn, so we should be fine. Alright, here we go. Six cars of this are already disconnected. Perfect. Oh god, that was a little laggy. Excellent. That's so much momentum. This train might actually push these guys into that switch. It did not, but we're gonna have to pull them forward at some point because that is gonna interfere. It doesn't matter. Mainline dodges it. Alright, let's get out of here. Can always pull them forward when we hitched all up. Let's uh, flick these switches so we go by on the main line instead of through the shunt area. And then let's head over to the sawmill. Here we go. Bunch of empties. Full forward. Pull this. We can still move probably at only 30% reg. Easy. It's a little bit slow to get going. I don't want to pull it too fast because obviously we don't want to pull off we do have a bunch of empties although to be honest i don't think this corner is steep enough for that to happen but either way we'll start it up nice and slow this is awesome 25 cars with the eureka this is so great what a capable little engine i love the physics now the, the realistic physics is so fantastic it just makes big trains so much more satisfying when you know that like there's a crazy amount of weight that you're pulling and that that weight kind of you know feels real I guess, I mean, to be honest, I don't really drive trains in real life, but, you know, it, it feels a lot better than it did before. Less arcadey, and more as if you're actually trying to slug along with this massive train. Oh yeah, it's still going. There's the first of the log cars. Awesome. Awesome. Can't even count them. We got three, and then the sheds are gonna get in the way. We should have six, though. There's four left there. There is, there's four left, so we should have six. There were ten originally. That's fantastic. Heading on through the shunt yard. I don't know what the whistle the whistle deal would be in the shunt yard, but just let people know. You know, that we're obviously we're obviously coming through. How are we doing for water? Uh where's the water lever on this thing? I can't even where the heck is it? Is it supposed to be there? Oh, it is there. It's just like it, weird. It's like clear or something. Yeah, there's the water level there. Okay, it's that little that little line. We are low on water. I feel like I should probably stop and fill up this train with some water here. Alright, it's full enough. Let's get out of here. Now we're just gonna have to pay attention because I don't know where the switches are all set to. You'll notice the water level in here hasn't gone up a lot yet, and that's actually because the water is filled in the tank in the back here, and then it uses actually like suction from the engine itself to pull water into the boiler so the boiler water will still keep going up as it pulls more from that tank but it relies on the negative pressure created by the steam leaving the boiler to actually suck that water in from the back so it's kind of cool um but yeah that's why this meter isn't full even though that tank is relatively full so when you're in first person and you see the water level that's the boiler water level but not actually the water level back here which is kind of cool so you have to you know pay attention to how much water you actually have in the tank you can see it is it is going up if we look, it's hard to tell because we're moving, but it will keep filling as we keep going. I think that switch is set left, which is we need to go left through this Y and then come into the sawmill from the front entrance. Um, and that'll actually allow us to load up properly and then come out and come back this way. 
which is how it's supposed to go. Yeah, that switch is set left. Okay, so that's good. I think in the last episode, Heist and I came from the sawmill in reverse, so the switches should all be set correctly. But that one's good. Approaching a switch. Okay, uh, we gotta look at the other side as well. I can't tell. This is a little bit of a hill. This is literally the only hill on this entire route. Goes up at like 1 or 2 percent. But honestly, I think we'll make it just with pure momentum. And the fact that we're only towing empties. That switch is set correctly. That is perfect. There's also the 1 percent hill that leads up into the sawmill itself. But I mean, that won't be a big deal. Again, we are still pulling empties at this point. So we're probably under like the 335,000 pound limit of the Eureka on 1 percent anyway. Uh, I think these ones are going to be set as well. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to have to check at the top of the bridge. If that's all set. Let's just pull back on the reg. We're going to be coasting for a while anyway with the momentum of this train. And this is a sharp-ish corner. Doesn't even matter. Holy cow. Look at that train. That's so cool. We have so much speed. It's great. Alright, that's perfect. We got to run ahead now and flick. Although that switch is set as well. That's right. Because we loaded and then came in in reverse. Oh, this is actually perfect. So we don't have to switch any switches until we're uh, fully loaded up. That's great. Going to maintain a little bit of reg here. Just because we are going up this hill. But I mean, it, I, yeah, half the train isn't even on the hill. It's fine. This is amazing. We just got to line it up with these first two stake flats with the beams platform over there. Zero percent. Let's start applying some brake. Let's apply a lot more brake. I don't know if that's enough. Break. Come on, slow down, slow down, slow down. That might actually just be perfect. Awesome. All right, let's load up 18 cars of beams. And actually, I'm going to go set some switches right now all the way through. So we got to go left through this Y, which is interesting. First time the Y's actually been used. And then we got to go left again and then go right on the freight pass thing, whatever, the sawmill bypass line. And then go back out onto the freight depot. So I'm actually going to run down the whole track and set all these. So once we get going, we don't actually have to switch any of these switches until we get back to the freight depot. Loading up the final two cars now. Sort of just skipped the whole loading process. It does take a fair amount of time to load up all 18 cars. And oh my god, the train is already really heavy. We haven't even added the weight of that one box car, which is like 40,000 pounds loaded. Or the six steel pipes at the back. But uh, this train is already very, very heavy to move with the Eureka. But it should still be able to do it. I mean, we've got 1.3 million pounds of pulling capacity on flat ground. This is probably like, what, 400,000-ish now. So it's not really that big a deal. Uh, full speed break off. 100% reg. Yeah, look at that. We're already, it just, it pulls a little bit. And then it finally gets going. It does take a bit to build up speed. We're also going to maintain momentum for a long time. Let's check the fire. 43%. We might as well stoke that a little bit more. Perfect. We're going to have to make sure we slow down with adequate time before we get to the freight depot. Uh, because those switches aren't set at all. So let's just see here. We are moving. These switches should be set. Left on the first one, which is correct. And then right on the second one. Awesome. This is amazing. We're moving. Got all our cars in one piece. Perfect. Fantastic. Off to the oil fields. Actually, off to the tool factory. We gotta go straight through the freight depot all the way to the tool factory, pick up the tools and the pipes, and then we'll head over to the oil fields. I'd rather have the whole train fully loaded just to see if the Eureka can do it. I mean, it should be able to. Just leave it at 100% reg here. I don't really like this corner. It's a little bit steep, but... I think we're okay. We've got momentum already built up. Unbelievable. This train's a monster. It's so sick. Well, I can tell you one thing. I'm definitely feeling the weight of the train on the frames. Hopefully the new spline update, when they finally come out with it, will uh, improve that as well with some of these longer trains. This is a big train, though. I mean, this is a lot of cars all being pulled by one tiny little engine. This is a little bit of a climb, I think. But I'm pretty sure we're fine. It's insane. The the amount of pulling power this one little engine has. It's so cool. 
I love the fact that the Eureka could do it. We should probably try maxing out the Porter at some time, too, because the Porter has 700,000 pounds, so theoretically, it should be able to pull all this on completely flat ground. I don't know if that's actually the case or not, but it might still be able to do it. We're going to have to slow down here, though. So let's cut our reg right away, because we're just going to be pulling a lot of speed. I don't even think we're up to max speed yet, to be perfectly honest. I think it's still accelerating. But we should be... Yeah, we're still slightly faster than the engine. That's perfect. So let's just uh, run ahead. Alright, so the first switch, we're going to have to go left. And that'll bring it onto the freight depot line. And then go right. That's perfect. Okay, this switch is left as well. Excellent. I think the only other switches we have to set are the log switch and the switch going onto the parallel line. Look at that train. That's so cool. Still chugging along. Okay, we should be good for a bit. So full steam ahead. 100% reg, no break. Full reverser. How's our fire doing? 85%. How's our water? Look at that. It's all, almost completely full on the water. That's fantastic. I don't know if we drained the tender or not. We might have. Can't tell. It doesn't look like there's much water in the tender. We probably drained it, to be honest. Off to the tool works. I actually didn't check how many tools we've made. I think we brought enough products last time because Heist and I did like a 27 car train. So I think we brought enough products to make at least 24 tools. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, we'll obviously load up with however many tools we can. But with the ratios, we're still going to have tools left over at the oil field. The tools at the oil field aren't really consumed nearly as much as the beams and the pipes are. So we should still be fine regardless to consume all of this. This should make us a fair amount of money too. We're at $3,400, and then after we get oil supplied, I want to start supplying the refinery as soon as possible, because apparently, like, oil barrels that are done at the refinery is the most, you know, efficient cost thing to do. It just sells for a lot, or I guess maybe tools are too? I'm not sure. We also have to buy the Climax at some point in time, but I'm kind of saving the money because we're going to need oil tanker cars, and they're $800 or $850 apiece or something like that, so... We are going to need a bunch of them. But once again, we'll be able to use the Eureka to do that, which is kind of cool. You can see the Eureka shaking, too, with the amount of uh, the amount of traction that it's putting on the ground. It's kind of awesome. This is a very, very heavy train for the Eureka. And it's going to just get heavier. Okay, these switches are not set correctly, but luckily it's just this one here. So we can just set this one to the left, and that's all we need to do. And then we'll just have to worry about that one when we're coming back. Oh, we should be able to hop back on, hit full speed. Oh no, that switch ahead isn't set. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. We gotta outrun this. We gotta outrun this. We're not going to. Okay, okay, hold on. Oh no, slam some brakes, slam some brakes. Really quickly, slam brakes. Slam the brakes. Oh god. Uh, don't derail, please. Please, this is gonna be such a nightmare if it derails. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, we're good. Get off the brakes before we lose all the speed. Excellent. Whew, that was a close one. I think the loading zone's on the right side, so we actually can go all the way around, but man, that was close. This train takes a lot to stop and a lot to get going. It has so much weight, it just is ridiculous. Even when you slam on the brakes, like when we go to load this thing, it's going to take a fair amount of, you know, slowing down beforehand. What I like to do, I mean, it makes sense. You just slow down to a crawl, and then you can actually break the last little bit pretty easily. But when you have any sort of momentum... You cannot slam the brakes and expect it to do anything, which I really love with the new physics update. The fact that, you know, they actually changed it to feel more like a train when you're braking. Before, the train braking was just so easy. It was, you know, no effort at all. Just full speed and then slam the brakes. All right, the tools only has a single crane to load it. And I think it takes 24 tools to load fully. Let's hit some brakes now. Full brake. Probably still not going to stop us in time. Oh my goodness. Come on. Come on. Slow it down. Slow down the whole train. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, maybe. Is it going to do it? Look at that. Look, look. Unbelievable. So good. Perfect. Wow. What timing. Crazy, crazy break timing. All right, now we just got to load up all 24 tools. Is there any way to actually see? Well, I guess we can open this. Oh, that's cool. Oh, and there's the toolbox in there. Can I open this one? I have to go to the other side, I think. No, it just, it just doesn't open. Oh, no, there it goes. That's so cool. Now we can actually see how many are in it. We can probably just drive with it open, too. It doesn't even care. That's awesome. 
I just realized I thought the tools holds 24 per car. It actually holds 32. Um, I also made this train based on the assumption that the steel pipe cars at the back hold 9, because that's what was written on the spreadsheet that I was given. But I'm wondering if that might be wrong now, too. It would make more sense for it to be 6, because that's what the logs are, and they look kind of like the log shape, like a, a stack of 6. But I'm not sure if they are 6 or 9. I mean, we'll find out, I guess, once we pull it up, but... I set up this train with the assumption of the ratios of the spreadsheet. Either way, we're still going to get some oil out of this because we are delivering one of each product, but maybe we should have had more of those cars at the back. I'm not sure. We'll find out, but yeah, this is 32, which is interesting. I thought it was 24, so we're going to really just deliver a lot of tools. All right, finally, the last toolbox. Apparently the tools are only 6,800 pounds. I don't know, something's weird with the tools. My spreadsheet does not match them. My spreadsheet says they should be like, you know, way heavier and way less. So I don't really know what the deal is. But anyway, we're fully loaded on tools. Now we gotta inch up and get the pipes. Hopefully this is nine pipes per thing. I don't really know. Let's give her a good old jerk there. Oh my God, you can feel it shaking. And all the cars click in. That's so much weight. We're still moving though. It's good. I mean, the Eureka should still pull this and then some. We're getting close to that 600,000 pound mark, if my spreadsheet, of course, is correct. So, I don't actually know how heavy we are, but it's heavy, that's for sure. I think it's 600,000 pounds. We're gonna be, like, halfway into the oil thing by the time we load up these pipes, honestly. It's hilarious. This train is so long. I think we're getting- I think the first car might be lined up there. You can probably slam the brakes right now, maybe? That's probably perfect. Oh, look at that. That's actually amazing. We have 44 steel pipes. If this takes nine... Oh, shoot. We're not gonna have enough pipes. Oh, they do take nine. I wasn't gonna have enough pipes regardless. I didn't even come check how much product we have. We don't have enough iron to make enough pipes. Well, shoot. Alright, I guess we're taking 44 pipes of the oil. We're gonna be... This is 54 beams. And I was gonna bring 54 pipes as well. Because it's a one-to-one -one ratio of beams to pipes. Are we... What are we out of? Iron bar and lumber? Probably both of those, right? Zero lumber and zero iron bar. Oh, well, that sucks. Well, I guess we're only taking 44. All right, last pipe, unfortunately. We got a little bit of a partial load there. The cars kind of slid forward while I was loading, but it's fine. doesn't really matter. We're going to have a full load anyway. Perfect. So now we can just head on over to the oil wells. And drop all this off. It's only like, you know, two seconds away, really. We're pretty much halfway there by the time we get to our locomotive. But that's fine. It is kind of funny that we're transporting goods, really, from, you know, a building right there. You can see the smoke through the trees. We're transporting from that building to this building right here. Like, it's really just a jump away. So, we're going to the right to unload. The switches are both set that way. We'll loop back and come back around on this left switch. But we'll have time to fix that. I think the first unload... Can't really tell. I think it's the tools. I think it's tools first, which is good for us. And then it's going to be beams. Where's the steel pipe go? Did I not build... Hold on a minute. Does the steel pipe also go there? Yeah, okay, the steel pipe goes the third thing. I was just about to say, I thought maybe the steel pipe was over there or something and I just missed it. But no, they're all they're all in a line. Okay, whew. That would have sucked. We would be laying some track. Unload all the tools. How much money do these make? Oh, dang. It's like 100... No, 30 a box. 30 per box. That's pretty good. 32? That's like a $900 car. In one car. That's impressive, actually. Tools are very valuable. You could sell, like, a two or three car tool train for hundreds of dollars. That's wicked. Except you have to make the tools, I guess. You need the raw iron and the lumber delivered to the tool place. But dang, you could like have literally a porter with a tool cart and that's it. And it's now the most valuable train you've ever done. How much can we store here? 30. Oh, shoot. We're going to max out the storage of this stuff. Oh, this is a pain in the butt. We need the pipes like up front. Wait, did I max out the tool storage? No. 32 out of 100. Okay, so there were a ton of extra tool slots. But yeah, we're going to max out this stuff. This isn't good. Um, so we're gonna have to stop unloading at some point. We're already picking up speed. Look at that. That's so funny. But yeah, we're gonna have to stop unloading these beams at some point. Actually, in like three more cars. 
And then we're going to have to wait until the steel pipes get all the way forward, unload the steel pipes, and then come all the way back and re-unload the beams. We'll just have to do a little bit of reversing with this train. Shouldn't be a big deal. Man, this is going to make a lot of money. All right, so that's it for the beams. And the train came to a stop. What? Oh, it derailed! What? How did you derail? I set this switch. Apparently I didn't, but I, I could have sworn I set this switch. Oh my goodness. Alright, well that's fine. That's fine, we'll, we'll fix this. Oh, it's coming in a little hot, but... Wow. Unbelievable, the train hit it and just like stopped completely. But that train has no brakes. It's just the sheer weight of it that stopped it. Alright, we're good. So now we can go forward. Uh, and basically we just have to let this thing get to the point where the steel's ready to unload. Gonna have to remember to stagger the cars next time. And do, you know, three beams, then some pipes, then three beams, then pipes. We are already coasting past where we need to be. Can I put some brakes? Will that help? No, we're just gonna, we're gonna just miss it. Alright, well let's start with this one, I guess. Something like that. Okay, or not. That's cool too. Oh no! Did those pipes not count? Oh, I think those pipes missed the station. Oh, that sucks. We just lost two pipes. For literally no reason at all. That's so... That's so bad. Oh, well. That's okay. It is what it is. Oh, man. I think we just lost two pipes. That's unfortunate. I mean, we're gonna need more pipes anyway. I don't know why the train's moving. I literally... I just undid the one car brake, and it's apparently rolling forward, even though it's all flat ground. But now we should be able to actually just go backwards through it in a very, very slow crawl. I can't believe that. I tried, I thought maybe that, you know, the staircase would be close enough, but no, it was not. This station is very, very small for the pipes. Um, you got the pipes and the beams right next to each other. This would honestly be convenient to do a trains just pipe, beam, pipe, beam, alternating cars. You know, and every second car is, is the other thing. Although, you need way more beam cars than pipe cars. Um, let's tie this brake again. And can I, can I unload this? There we go. Is that gonna work? And let's get this one as well. Perfect. Let's untie that brake. For some reason it likes to pick up speed. I think it's just the number of cars. I feel like the collisions between the cars is just a little bit weird. Kind of like, you know, if you have two objects pushing each other constantly. Because look, it looks like we're picking up speed. Maybe it's an optical illusion, but like there's no brakes on it. And it looks like it's somehow accelerating. Alright, up to 68.66. In terms of money, this is going to be... We're going to be over 7 grand, I think. Three more cars left. Once again, it still looks like that train is picking up speed. That's crazy. Maybe the regulator's stuck on. Although I thought I left it at 0%. Pretty sure it was at 0%. But yeah, we are definitely picking up speed. There's like less weight on the train. It's just accelerating faster. Get that last one. Come on. What? There we go. Okay. Mashing the enter button. Perfect. That's it. How much money do we have? $7,130. That's fantastic. And our train's going to just come right back over to us. And we can head on out. So, full speed ahead. Full reg. 100%. Let's go. And well, while that does that, we might as well wait over here and flick this switch back and the other switches to get back onto the main line. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Obviously, we're producing oil now, which is great. I don't know how much oil we're actually going to have. Is there... Oh, it says it right there. 336 out of 1,000. That's pretty good. And the steel pipes are all consumed. So I don't know how much that is in a tanker, but obviously, we'll have to get some tankers and connect up to the refinery and deliver those to the refinery and start getting some oil barrels. Although I have a feeling the refinery also takes raw iron or something that we're going to have to get from the smelter as well. But maybe we'll buy the Climax and do that with the Climax. I'm not exactly sure. Or, uh, you know, we'll see what the requirements are. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And uh, I'm just going to wait for my train here. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see you all next time.